Today, I'm gonna to share with you guys the five most useful F-string tips you can use in your code today. What is an F-string, you ask? Well, you're about to find out. Welcome back, guys, to the channel. Welcome back, guys, for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh, and I am stoked to have you guys here today. Now, before I dive into today's video, guys, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help my videos out in the YouTube algorithm, and thank you guys for your support. Now, today's video is all about F string hacks or formatted strings here in Python. This not only speeds up your workflow, but allows you you to use your data and variables more dynamically to output them to the terminal, right? So today, I'm going to share with you guys the five most useful hacks you can get started with right now today, and I'm going to do this through interactive code. Before I do, guys, the first link in the description is my weekly Python newsletter where I create content multiple times a week all around Python and helping you wherever you're at in your learning journey. Okay, that's the first link in the description, absolutely free. And then all the other links I have down there, those are available for you guys. There are resources that I've made over the years that break things down and they just really help you out in your Python journey. So head on down the links in the description, check them out. Now, into the reason why you're all here, what are these tips I'm talking about? Let's find out now. All right, guys, and here we are focusing on our first F string hack. And I'm gonna be focusing on rounding numbers as well as giving them an increased readability. So we know an F string is a format string, and let's start off with like a price, for example. Let's say I have a price, we know this is a float. I'm gonna make up a number here, that was random. And with this number is gonna have a bunch of decimals after, okay? If I asked you guys to round this down, a lot of you guys would jump straight to round, which is the built-in Python function. I would give it price and then the number of how many places after the decimal do you want left after it rounds down. So for example, this is gonna output this right here. But um, we don't really need to do this because you have to call two Python functions. So it's taking more time. You would use round if you want to return that value to use later. But in our case, we want to format this using an F string. So we use F with quotation marks. This is an F string, a format string. I'm gonna use curly brackets and inside here we can pass our live information. So let's start off with what do I want to print? Price. Now this is just a normal price. We are gonna use a colon here and then to round down, we can use decimal 2f. This is going to produce the same exact results as we have above here. Um, now, for smaller numbers, this is great. This works well, okay? Uh, it's gonna do the same thing. But when you start getting with bigger numbers, even this, 12,000 or 10 million, 100 million, it becomes really hard to read what's going on here. So in fact, I wanna round down, but I also wanna be able to increase that readability. So what I can do is I can say price, uh, I'm gonna start with a colon, and I'm gonna put a comma. So this is gonna increase that readability, and I'll show you what I mean here. Then we can round down by our 2F. Now let's run this, and let's look at the three different outputs that were given. Boom, voila. The first two are identical, but you can see the last one actually puts in that comma everywhere that it's needed. So I can very easily see now that it's 12,345 and 68 cents, right? That is rounding numbers and increasing the readability using our F strings. All right, on to the next F string tip. The second tip leads perfectly off of our first one as we focused on uh, rounding numbers down as well as the increased readability. But if you don't need to round down, there's no point to that, right? If we have a number here, and I'm just going to say uh, 52, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, how much is that, right? That's 53 million. Um, if I come down here and we're going to use our F string, and this time I want to format my number and in between each place, uh, I'm gonna put an underscore, right? 
or maybe you don't want an underscore. It should look like a normal number. Well, coming from our first example, I can use my colon. Whatever comes after the colon, that's what's going to go in between each location in that number. So a comma, for example. Now, when I read this, this increases that readability, right? Because us as developers having to look at these really big numbers, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Now you can see, boom, 53 million, right? And in the English written format, we would be writing it like this. So it depends on what you need, right? But when we want to break things up with our numbers, we can create an F string, give it our number, we always have that colon, and then whatever is after the colon, that's what's going to go up to break up our number. That's the second hack building off the first one. Okay, into something new, let's jump into the third f-string tip. Okay, dealing with time in Python, if you haven't, uh, is a bit iffy, and you may have seen it, and it may look confusing. So we're going to cover that here now. And how can we work with time and f-strings together? I got some really cool tricks for this one. So working with time in Python, now there's a few libraries. There's Arrow, there's Pendulum. I do like those. They're new uh, modules. But uh, Python just has the date time. And this works, I mean, this works great for most of, of the things we need to do. So I'm going to import date time. Now let's create a variable for the current time. So I'm going to say now. Uh, this is of type date time, and we're just going to say date time now. So that's going to get the current time. Uh, and if you run that, you will see your current time based on where you're at in the world. Okay, um, cool. Now we can format uh, a few different ways. So I'm going to print off, okay, F string. And let's start off by doing the basic format to kind of warm you guys up with how daytime looks. So I could say now, and let's actually run this because I want you guys to see an example and be able to carry on with that example. That's at least how my mind works. Uh, okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like. That's confusing, to say the least. That's that's very confusing. Okay, so I'm going to actually say here, let's put nothing. I'll keep now. Uh, let's format this, though. Okay, so now I'm using our colon, right? This is our f-string formatting techniques. Uh, we use the percent sign. In what order do I want this to uh, follow? Okay, so it's going to go day. And then we do a dot, okay, uh, put what you want there, month dot year. Um, this is going to produce you and cut everything else off. There you go, okay. Today is the 9th of October, 2024. Uh, I could even get nifty, right, and I could throw in the time. I'll just wrap it in parentheses so it's split up for us. Um, when you're working with the date, it's lowercase lettering. The time is all uppercase. So I'll do the percent symbol again. I'll do H for hours. We will do M for minutes and we will do S for seconds. Okay, run your code. You can see it neatly split up right there. Okay, currently it's 1.12 in the afternoon on the 10th, excuse me, the 9th of October. Okay, really cool. Okay, so I introduced you, right, percent with the lowercase letter, day, month, year. If it's working with time, it's uppercase. Um, let's get even better. I want to see the day of the week and the month. I don't want to have to read numbers and interpret, oh, what month is that? Because our minds probably see the month October as OCT, right? And it's, it's easier, it's faster to interpret. So, whoops, let me get that F string back here. Uh, we can actually do this, and it's a lot easier. I'm just going to say now, and instead of typing everything above, I can just say C. That's it. Okay? If I run this, our outputs are going to look very different. One is going to be a more readable English format. The other one is going to be numbers. Boom. Today is Wednesday, October 9th. Here is our time followed by the year. Okay, and the last one that I'll throw in here for you guys as a little bonus is let's just say we want the time in 12 hour format. I'm gonna say now, we're gonna do percent I. Okay, and then we're gonna do percent P. So I represents our time in 12 hour format. P is gonna represent AM and PM. There we go, it is currently 1 PM. Now notice uh, right here, it is 1.13 PM. This rounds down to the whole hour. That's what we're getting from this, right? So now you guys can go ahead and work with time in your F-strings. 
Okay, I got one final tip for you guys. Let's jump right into it. Hey guys, real quick, help me out here. Hit that like button. And if you're not already, subscribe. That really it does help me out in the YouTube algorithm. And remember, the first link below is my weekly Python newsletter. Back to the video. Going on to my third tip is all about creating blank space or doing something repetitive uh, with text in this example. So for example, I'm gonna create a string for test and let's just say uh, testing, right? Or even better, why don't I say subscribe? Now, going down here, let's for example say I wanna put uh, a bunch of underscores so I could come here and I could go like boom right before okay or after or I want to put them before and after I don't want to have to type that out I'm creating this dummy space here and we can insert something into that so we have our text word let's create our f string and inside here I'm going to start by putting in our variable test we're always using that colon now what do I want to use in that blank space? Well, let's start with the underscore, okay? And now that we have the underscore here, I'm going to say, where do I want it? Before or after? We can signify the greater than or less than sign for this, and I'll actually show you both. And then it needs to be followed by a number. So how many spaces should this occupy? A total of 20. Now this number 20 includes your text, okay? So however long this word is, the remaining to make up the 20 is gonna be occupied by this uh, dummy blank space. I'm gonna run this to showcase this example here. And then I'm gonna follow it up by a different example, two more to be exact. Boom, right there you go. Okay, so all of those together is 20. I'm gonna take this and copy it and we're just gonna switch it up. So uh, you could change this to really anything you want. I'll put a hashtag here. Uh, and this time, maybe I want them to go after the word subscribe. So I'm gonna change this to the less than sign. Now when I run this, we can see both of those are being done. Okay, they still occupy a space of 20. Uh, and the last one I could show you guys is how do you get them on both ends? Okay, because that could also be an option. So if we have our test text here, uh, what do you want on each side? So let's just say, uh, let's put a bar this time. And now instead of using the grace, greater than or less than sign, we are going to use our caret. How many spaces should it occupy? 20. Run your code, boom, there we go. A great way to create blank space and quickly fill in what you're looking for, especially if we're doing something repetitive. And here I want to show you guys how to do quick calculations or create keyword arguments in an f-string. Now a keyword argument you may have seen quargs, okay, if this is new to you, uh, check this out. I may do an episode on this here, okay. So um, how to do quick calculations and um, see our keyword arguments. So I'm gonna create, let's say A is uh, equal to 50. Let's say B is equal to uh, 25. Now notice this whole video, guys, I've been using type annotations. And I did this in one of the best Python habits to get started with. Okay, so I'm trying to use these here for you guys. So really to do this keyword calculation, uh, if I get an F string here, I could do A plus B. Now I'm gonna run this, and I mean like you know what's gonna be output here, but I want you to run it so you can see the before and the after effect of this. Okay, so I clicked play twice. Um, 75, okay, that's just the answer. That is not a keyword argument. Okay, because a keyword argument should be something like keyword equals argument, um, like a dictionary, okay, ultimately. So all we need to do for that is equals. I wanna get the sum of that, and I wanna see where it's coming from. And so now I can see A plus B, oh hey, okay. That is what I'm adding together, right? So I can quickly see in my terminal, what am I adding together to get this output here? Right, that's pretty cool. I can do that. This can also be done with a string. Okay, so I'm gonna create a string here. Let's just say, I love Python. Okay, Python's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, let's jump down here and I can show you two new things now. 
So just like before, I could say text equals. Uh, and this is going to produce, I'm going to turn this off actually. This is going to produce our keyword argument, that quick calculation that we want to see. The one thing that's going to have is going to be, wait for it, is you can see here, text equals string I love Python. Pretty cool. That's our quick calculation. Um, maybe you don't want the string. You don't want to see that. So up here I can say text equals exclamation point S. This is basically like you are deleting the string formatting. When I run this now, you can see that there are no quotations anymore. It's just text equals I love Python. That brings it up for our keyword arguments and quick calculations in F strings. Well guys, there you have it. In no particular order, those are five incredibly useful hacks that you can use when working with F strings. And I hoped that you gained value in today's video, right? If you were unfamiliar with F strings, I hope I opened that up for you to show why they're useful. If you were unfamiliar with date time or you found that concept confusing, I hope that I broke it down for you too. If you guys did get value in today's video, help me out, hit that like button. Um, and I will see you guys in next week's episode of Code with Josh. Guys, drop a comment. Let me know which one of these is new to you. Are they all new to you? I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Okay, guys, I'll see you in next week's episode of Code with Josh. Until then, Python crew.